Hey everyone, Palo Alto Networks reported quarterly financial earnings results that sent the stock price down following disappointing financial figures. I'll review those financial figures and I will update my recommendation for Palo Alto Network stock. Remember coming into the quarter, I told investors not to buy Palo Alto Network stock because of the increasing risks, which I will talk about in this video. So let's take a look at the earnings results first, and then I'll update my buy recommendation. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, so Palo Alto Networks reporting total revenue in the third quarter, which grew 15% year over year to 20 billion. Net income per share also increased to 79 cents, up from 31 cents in the same quarter last year. Interestingly, RPO, which are remaining performance obligations, increased by 23% to 11.3 billion. Remember, remaining performance obligations eventually turn into revenue. And so if remaining performance obligations are increasing faster than revenue, that's a good sign that revenue growth is on an upward trend instead of a downward trend if the opposite were true. Now, the CEO saying that they were pleased with the enthusiastic response to platformization from our customers in the third quarter. Remember that platformization strategy that they implemented last quarter was the big risk that I was talking about that I cautioned investors about. So platformization is a long-term strategy that addresses the increasing sophistication and volume of threats and the need for AI-infused security outcomes. Yeah, that's true, but the real gist of the platformization strategy and how it was going to impact investors was this. So Palo Alto Networks, of course, has several different cybersecurity products, as do many of its competitors. So Palo Alto Networks customers go with several different vendors for their complete cybersecurity needs. What Palo Alto Networks attempted in the last quarter or implemented in the last quarter is a strategy to get more of its customers to go with Palo Alto Networks for all of their cybersecurity needs, not just one or two products with Palo Alto Networks. And so to implement that strategy, Palo Alto Networks said that it was going to offer free trials to customers that were with different vendors so that they're not double paying, right? So if this customer had three or four different providers with different end dates for their contracts, Palo Alto Network said, come sign up with us and you won't have to pay us until your contracts with these other providers are completed. So essentially giving many of these customers free trials during the time when they are not paying the fees for cybersecurity. So with that strategy, Palo Alto Networks could increase market share, but at the same time, it was going to experience higher cost and it was risking a response from their competitors who might retaliate and say, wait a minute, you're trying to take customers away from us? We're not gonna let that happen. We're gonna go and offer our customers an even better deal to get them to stick around with us. And that's why I highlighted this strategy as a risk for Palo Alto Networks. So far, the results that have came back have been positive. Palo Alto Networks signed up more customers. Palo Alto Networks didn't experience a big increase in cost as you see in the increase in profitability. And Palo Alto Networks signaled that they're getting a lot more meetings with customers and they expect that they're going to sign a lot more customers going forward because of the interest they're seeing, right? So they already reported a boost in the number of sign up customers and an increase in the number of engagements they're having with customers. So far, so good. But it's not an all clear sign because it's still early. This is just one quarter and I haven't yet seen the response from rivals. I haven't yet seen how the rivals are going to respond to this strategy. They are likely still formulating a response. They're thinking about how to respond. So it's still not like an all clear sign 
safe to go, right? So I'll keep you updated on that strategy and the impacts of that strategy because that is a big industry-wide risk right now. So in terms of their outlook, Palo Alto said that they're going to expect revenue uh, in the re revenue growth in the range of 10 to 11 percent and billings growth in the range of 9 to 10 percent. So if you look at the total revenue being up 10 to 11 percent in the next quarter, in the current quarter revenue grew 15 percent. So they're decelerating, right? Revenue growth from 15 down to 10. That's not what investors like to see in terms of the revenue growth profile, especially when we saw an uptick in remaining performance obligations. Investors were hoping for an uptick in revenue. Now the total billings, while investors may have been disappointed with this number, I was just glad that it wasn't a disaster. I was expecting a bigger downfall because of that platformization strategy and how it could impact billings for Palo Alto networks. While it wasn't great, it was also not a disaster, which was possible with this strategy implementation. Looking at the financial statements, there was a few things to point out. As we talked about, revenue increased nicely. And the cost of revenue also increased, but not as much as revenue did. You could see the cost of revenue here jumping from 381 million in the previous quarter up to 435 million in the current quarter. That was part of the increase in the trial offers. Also, sales and marketing expense increased. Again, part of that trial offer can be booked as marketing expense because you're offering a promotion an incentive so it's just the type of how you can categorize expenses and you're obviously you're having more conversations with clients you're maybe traveling more you've maybe hired more sales staff to anticipate an increase in customer engagement as a result of this strategy to increase market share so you can see sales and marketing expense jump to 718 million up from 639 million in the same quarter the prior year a pretty meaningful jump in sales and marketing expense. But despite those investments, its operating income still increased because of a nice top line revenue increase. 177 million in operating income, up from 79 million in the same quarter the prior year. So a nice increase to be sure. One final thing I'll note in the financial statement is a continued increase in shareholder dilution. Palo Alto Networks has been known to dilute shareholders over the last few years, they've been utilizing stock-based compensation meaningfully, and they continued that trend. Weighted average shares outstanding, diluted up to 354 million. That was up from 344 million in the same quarter last year. Now, I highlighted that coming into the quarter, I did not have Palo Alto Network stock rated as a buy. I had it rated as a hold or market perform. I last updated that on May 12th. After the stock price reacted to Palo Alto's earnings, it's trading at a forward price to earnings of 51 and a price to free cash flow of 37.9. On the expensive side, to be sure, considering the increased risks that Palo Alto Networks is facing. So to update my buy recommendation for Palo Alto Network stock, I'm keeping it rated as a hold. Although if I were to provide more clarity to this recommendation, in the previous quarter, after they announced those results and I reviewed their figures, even though I had Palo Alto stock rated as a hold or a market perform, I had it closer to the borderline of a sell. And then following this quarter's results and the stock price reaction, I have now Palo Alto Network stock rated closer to the borderline of being a buy. So it's moved up closer to being a buy rather than being a sell where it was last quarter. The risks were more pronounced last quarter. The incoming data from the strategy looked good to me. What I saw from the initial reaction from their customers. And now what I want, what I'm waiting to see is the reaction from Palo Alto's competitors. That's the next big, big information I need to come to a conclusion whether or not to upgrade Palo Alto stock to a buy. But for now, keeping it rated as a hold. 
Thank you for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. I know there's a lot you could be doing with your time and a lot of other videos you could be watching. So I truly appreciate that you chose to watch this one. If you wanna see more videos just like this, hit the subscribe or the like button. They'll both help me make more videos just like this one. Thank you again.